Good afternoon. I'm Karen McDonald. I'm the Oakland County Prosecutor. This is an important day for our community, the survivors, and especially those who lost children they loved. The individual who committed the shootings at Oxford High School pled guilty to all charges this morning, including terrorism. We are not aware of any other case anywhere in the country where a mass shooter has been convicted of terrorism on state charges. No one has ever been convicted of similar charges under these circumstances, an act of targeted violence like this. The pleas today were also important because it guarantees that every person who was in Oxford High School on that day will have a chance, if they want to, to speak in their own words about how this has affected them. This is the first time ever that all of the victims, including those who were terrorized, will have that opportunity. That's why the decision to charge the shooter was with terrorism and the plea today are so important. I've just come from meeting with the victims who were in court today. This is the first time they've heard the shooter, in his own words, detail how he obtained the weapon. I want to be very clear. There were no plea negotiations, no plea offers, no reductions, and no sentencing agreements. I want to thank also everyone who has worked very hard to get us where we are today, particularly the Oakland County Sheriff, Mike Bouchard, standing to my right, and all of his investigators, including the two detectives, uh, Detective Tim Willis and Detective Joe Bryan, and all of the responders on November 30th. I've just recently been told that there were more responders on that day than in any other mass shooting. Um, people came from everywhere in the county to help. And I want to thank every single person who was there that day and who helped get us to this day. Um, I also want to thank uh, our county executive, Dave Coulter, who's also standing here, and our entire board of commissioners. As a county, our elected leader together to make sure that we could get to this day. When a school shooting happens, we all agree that we can never allow to ha it to happen again. But it does. We need to take, the, take what we learned here and what research shows us and work to actually stop these, these shootings, not to simply respond to them. Mass shootings and gun violence are preventable. That's why I've convened the commission to address gun violence in Oakland County. We are working to put their expertise and insight into a real plan to reduce the number of people who are killed by gun violence in our county. I know the victims and the public have questions about what's next. The judge set a date for a Miller hearing. At that hearing, the prosecution and defense will present testimony and evidence, not just about the murders, but also about the defendant's background and other factors. After that hearing, the judge gets to decide whether life without parole is appropriate. It's too soon at this moment to know whether or not that hearing will take place, but there is a tentative date. I now would like to bring up our, our Oakland County Sheriff, Dave <coughs> Bouchard. Well, thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank our prosecutor, Karen McDonald, and her team and staff for bringing us to this point, uh, the hard work involved in that, and holding, uh, in my opinion, what is truly a twisted and evil person accountable. Um, this is something that needed to happen. It will never make our victims whole. Obviously, their lives have been inextricably and permanently altered, but uh, I appreciate the efforts in, in bringing us to this point. Uh, from my point, I hope he gets life without parole. He has permanently taken lives away from four lovely souls and has permanently affected many, many more. I'd also like to thank, as the prosecutor did, our first responders that went that day and my deputies that went in that building. Um, everybody that went to that high school uh, was awarded the Oxford pin, and on that pin it has four stars for our four lost souls. And in the middle of the Oxford O is the number 18. That's how many rounds he had left. And it's my belief that he would have fired every one of those had he not been interrupted by deputies going immediately in. And when you compare it against Parkland or Uvalde, you obviously see the difference. So to all of the first responders that went there and were absolutely determined to go in and did go in immediately, um, that 18 makes the difference. And so thank you um, to them, to our executive, the commissioners, for uh, supporting this effort to get us here today. And they need to be held accountable. 
you know, there's nothing more I can say about that individual than he's evil. And I appreciate the fact that we're at this point and hopefully uh, at least a small part of today is that the victims don't have to go through the heartbreak of the testimony and the evidentiary presentation of all the stuff that happened that terrible, terrible day. Uh, well, thank you. I'll be brief. Good morning, everybody. Um, look, this is just one day in a long and difficult road to justice for the victims, but it's my hope that this guilty plea will bring some relief to those victims, to their families, and to the extended Oxford community. Uh, I want to commend the Oakland County Sheriff and Prosecutor's Office for what I think is the remarkable work they did on that day and since then to get us to this point. Um, it truly has been remarkable. This morning I had the opportunity to talk to some local Oxford leaders and working with them and Sheriff Mike Bouchard and Prosecutor Karen McDonald, we're going to continue to do everything that we can to support the community in this time of healing. The resiliency center that we stood up will remain open and available to provide residents with the mental health and other resources that they need for as long as they need. But we're not done yet. An independent investigation is, is underway and we'll continue to support those efforts as well so that we get a full accounting of what happened on November 30th. Uh, that's what the victims are entitled to and that's what we're committed to. So thank you very much. I'll take three questions. Prosecutors, you heard the shooter plead guilty to 24 counts right in front of you. Could you share what was going through your mind at that time and what steps will you be taking to pursue a sentence of life without parole? What's going through my mind is what's going through my mind every single day. We sit um, and, and talk with victims, parents who had their children murdered, parents whose children were injured, and then children and everybody in that building that day that will never be the same. So I was thinking about the people sitting behind me. And as far as life without parole, if you'd answer that as well, would you be pursuing that? It's, it's too soon to tell. We do have a date set. and. By, I'm going to follow the law, which is to consider all the, the factors. Um, but, but again, today, as I was um, talking to the victims, what we're really trying to do is just take a moment and, and process what happened um, and then move forward from there. Will yes? Will the plea impact sentencing him, though? Can he get out? Will he be able to get out at some point? Again, that seems highly unlikely. However, it's just too soon, uh, too soon to tell. But, but to be clear, he is facing life without parole on all of those charges, and we are going to follow the law with regard to what, what sentence we'll request. His attorney said he was remorseful at that time, although we didn't see any emotion from him whatsoever. Did you feel there was any remorse, or what do you think about that? I can't comment to what his motivations or feelings are. Can you explain to us more about uh, a Miller hearing? What exactly is that? Uh, we're happy to provide the case law for you. Um, when a juvenile is uh, charged and convicted with capital offenses, he's entitled to a certain hearing, and, and that's what the, the law provides. The shooter said in court today that his parents bought the weapon and that it was in an unlocked container. Is that going to be used in the case against the parents? I can't comment on the case against the parents, as you know. I can state that he did say in his own words that he – his father bought the gun with his money that he gave to his father and that it was not locked. And those uh, facts are very important for his case. We've charged him and he's been convicted of terrorism and it goes to his state of mind and his preparation and premeditation. So that, that is why um, that was part of his plea. And did you know that was coming? We have been working around the clock uh, with his attorneys, talking to victims, making sure they didn't hear uh, the facts and what's going to happen in this case um, through the media, uh, because that's not how you want to hear something like that. So I can say that um, Mark Keese, who's standing over here, and myself have been put in many, many, many hours uh, to make sure that everybody was prepared for what they were going to hear, the, the, the trauma of just being in the same courtroom is is immense for these individuals. Is it still possible any school officials could be charged when, when Ethan pled guilty to, among other things, having the weapon in his backpack? And the school officials were the one that, that they had authority over him when he was at the school with the gun in his backpack. 
we've looked at all the evidence and we've issued all the criminal charges that we think are appropriate at this time. So. Has there been any discussion with federal authorities related to possible additional gun crimes? We are in constant communication and working cooperatively with our federal counterparts. Uh, again, the, the, the people standing up here have done a, a, a wonderful job of working together and, and, and not just people up here, but also um, in our, our federal other counties as well. Could you speak to that federal charges for the parents? I can't comment on that. You said um, on the high end, life without parole is a possibility, but what would be the low end, uh, what's the other option on the, on the low end for even funding? You know, it's too, it's too soon to tell. We don't have that, real, that information, but I do want to point out though that this is really an important day for, for the over thousands of uh, people in that community, for the, for the kids in that school, for the parents. Today is about some small closure that this is not going to be a trial. And he pled as charged to all 20. I sat with victims and this is hard for them. It's emotional, but it's a step forward and we're, we're relieved. Were the, One more question? were the victims' families uh, anticipating a trial, or were they glad that it didn't end? We have done our very, very best to the, to, the, to the extent possible to be completely transparent, to allow as much information to get to them from directly from us, um, even when we think it's small. Even something like a small adjournment of a, of a pretrial causes trauma. So we have been very diligent in letting them know what to expect. And unfortunately, part of that is we, we can't, we can never give them 100% certainty that anything is going to happen. So Mark and I worked very hard and, and making sure that today went the way that it was planned to, but you just, you can't ever know for certain. All right, that's, that's the last, the last question. I'm just coming across that there's been another school shooting in St. Louis, three kids have been shot. So with that, what did you learn through this process, your office, that maybe can be shared with other departments going forward so that we can try to look at these situations and change them so they don't continue to happen? You know, it's not just about what sharing with other departments. Gun violence is preventable. That's what I've learned. And the fact that there's a, another school shooting does not surprise me, which is horrific. We need to keep the public and inform the public on how we can prevent gun violence. It is preventable. It is why I convened the commission, and we should never, ever allow that to be just something we have to live with. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.